at the Fishhouse Art Center dot com. And finally, forbearances. Working remotely, internet shopping, retail space, and rental income have been hit hard by COVID. If you're looking to restructure your debt, obtain financing or equity, Commercial Mortgage can help you out. Tim Mullen at Commercial Mortgage has been providing debt restructuring services since 2003. Tim never charges a front fee and all consultations are free. Tim only gets paid if he provides you a debt workout. Looking for a debt solution or financing? Give Tim a call at 772-872-6099 or visit Commercial Mortgage LLC to schedule your free consultation. So I've told you I've got some interesting uh, shows that are coming up. Next week we're going to have, of course, Eric Miller with Talk About Martin. He comes into the studio once um, once a month, and there's a lot of updates that are happening here in the county that we're going to look at, and one of them is the Bright Line Bridge. We found out that uh, that's not going to be replaced and going to be remained single-tracked, so we'll cover that a little bit. Also, the Board of County Commissioners will be voting um, on a possible comp plan change on February 22nd, so the day before the show next week, and we're going to follow that to see um, how they vote on this comp plan change, and basically the request is uh, to come up with a new land use designation called Rural Lifestyle. Right now in the agricultural area, there's one unit per 20 acres. This new designation, if approved, would be one unit per five acres. So uh, that's something that everybody in the county is, is very much following. And the following week, we're going to have a gentleman by the name of Michael Yan on. He is right now with the trucker convoy protesting vaccine mandates, but he's a former Green Beret photographer and uh, writer. And he has traveled in more than 80 countries, including China, Indian, in, uh, India, Vietnam. And he has been following this pandemic. And um, with his correspondence, his war correspondence, he has probably studied pandemics more than any person I've ever even spoke to. And he has come up with a new term called Pant for War, which is pandemic, famine, and war. And Michael will be calling into the studio because he's traveling all over, but he wants to warn folks about uh, what he believes is an upcoming famine. And he's going to tell you why. He's going to let you know how it all ties together, the pandemics, famine, and war. And he's, he's going to have some uh, good information and some facts from his studies and his travels to uh, back up what he's saying. So it's going to be a really interesting show. And then following that, uh, Mayor Matheson from Stewart will be in the studio on March 10, and he'll be updating us about the city of Stewart and, again, the Bright Line Bridge. So with all of that, we are here with our special guest today. And, you know, it's kind of funny. I talked about famine a little bit, but uh, we have a wonderful organization that's here in the studio. It's the Salvation Army. Um, we have Colonel Dennis Stressel here to my right, and we have Kim Johnson right here in the, the center of us if you're watching on Facebook Live. And the Salvation Army is an international movement, is an evangelical part of the Universal Christian Church, and its message is based on the Bible. Its ministry is motivated by the love of God, and its mission is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to meet human needs in his name without discrimination. So, Colonel Stressel, thank mm. you so much for coming in today. My pleasure. There are so many things, and I, I talked about famine, and the reason why I said that is you have a food drive right now at, at our wonderful county fair. That's exactly right. Thank you, by the way, for sharing our international mission statement because it's pretty important for us. gives us a goal as to what, a, to, what to achieve. And here in Martin County, we're, I think we're doing a very good job of doing that, and you've mentioned the food drive. I'm aware that in the number of our pantries, we have one here in Stewart, we have one in St. Lucie and, and all the other places that we serve, we're, we're not as full as we ought to be. And so uh, we're grateful to Jay out at the uh, fairgrounds for uh, agreeing to help us with a food drive. And if you're heading out to the fair, please bring food and drop it off so that we can uh, fill our pantries up. Very important, and that's something that you use all year through. So oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you have drop-off points around the county as well throughout the year, but the fair, everybody heads out there. This is something you can put a couple cans Right, and if you can't make it to the fairground, you can always come to the Salvation Army sites and uh, drop off your food for pantry items uh, because we have a, a long lines of people who, um, who need the food. So, Colonel Stressel, you are the interim director right now here in the county. That's right. And what are, 
what are your goals right now? What what are you charged with with doing with the Salvation uh, Army while you're here? As we had this conversation, Casey, earlier that this is the fifth time that I've been pulled out of retirement. I retired <laughs> in 2015, and uh, I've been around uh, mostly in Florida, although I'm from the Midwest originally. And it's a, actually a joy to do to be able to exercise. You know, the experience and the academic work that I used, I had all these years. And then to do this now at this age is just really exciting for me. And normally, uh, as a troubleshooter, as a fixer, I come in and, and sort of tweak uh, the Army systems when, uh, when they need it. But I've arrived here at Martin County in Stewart, and, uh, and we serve three different counties, by the way, and I found a, a wonderful operating system organizationally. Uh, we're, we're well funded. We, um, and we, by the way, we can always use more funds right, to right. help us. Um, we have great programs and an incredible supportive staff that I've just been very blessed with. And so my task here is going to be just a little bit different than it has in other locations. So uh, not only the administrative part and the organizational part, uh, there are some things that I see that I do need to tweak, but it's mostly internally. And, uh, and then, of course, I'm, as all Salvation Army officers, I'm ordained. And so I take care of the Sunday programs as well. So if you come to the Salvation Army on a Sunday, we have church. And I'm the pastor. And uh, of all the things that I love to do, that may be the best thing I love to do. So which, where's that location at if people want to attend the service? Our address is 821 Southeast Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, We're right across the street from the Stewart Police and Fire Station. Very easy. And that's Kim Johnson here with the Salvation Army as well. Your title again is Director of Development? Is that's correct. Cr wonderful. And you have been with the Salvation Army since 2014. So you have seen um, a lot of people come through and a lot of help that has been served here in the community. While a lot of growth. We've grown quite a bit in the time that I've been there. Mm -hmm. So... Tell us a little bit, if we're all familiar with the Salvation Army, you have a Salvation Army store, is donations, and really you accept pretty much anything on donations. Right, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, if I can, the Salvation Army uh, is simple, but it's complex at the same time. It's inner workings. And uh, so uh, in my capacity, I've, I've been one of the international leaders of the Salvation Army, serving in various countries, and then part of the international leadership system that the Salvation Army has. So here in Martin County and Okeechobee, I think I'm saying yes, it correctly, you are. St. Lucie, uh, we do a, a great deal of social services. Uh, we have the Compassion House, which I suspect we'll talk a little bit about. We have three very good thrift stores, and, and incidentally, when you come to our thrift stores, and you purchase something, you're actually helping the Salvation Army program because that money is funneled back in to our budget so that we can help more people. So it's a, it's a, it's a good thing to have those, and they're very well maintained and managed, and we have a very good staff and a lot of good customers coming to our stores as well. One thing about your your thrift store and donations and whatnot, there's something that has made social media the rounds for quite a few years now, and that's how much of the money actually goes to the organization to help people as opposed to administrative costs. And the Salvation Army, as I recall, is the one that stands out that almost all the funds go to helping people, right. very well, little to administration. Nationally, nationally, and it all depends on the, the various communities and what the programs that they have, but nationally we like to say that 82 percent of donations come right to programs and the balance is usually administrative costs right. and we keep that low <laughs> because quite Frankly, we don't pay people a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Even our Salvation Army officers, that we do this uh, really because of a calling. Uh, God calls us. Uh, we certainly don't do this to uh, get wealth or fame. Right. And, uh, and it, it really is a life calling for us because we, 
We feel that uh, we need to share, we need to help. Uh, and in my own family, I come from a background where my parents were Salvation Army officers. My grandparents were. And while I have uh, uh, undergrad and graduate degrees, I remember a time when I was telling my grandparents I was going to go to university, and they say, why? You don't need a college education to know how to feed people. And that, you know, that was the way they lived their life. And, and I learned great servanthood from my grandparents and my parents in reaching out and, and giving yourself completely every day to, to the needs of other people. And the other thing I want to point out, too, as you can tell, folks, the Salvation Army is, is truly a special organization with very dedicated people. I mean, like you said, you're not there for the fame. You're certainly not there for the money. You're here to help people. <laughs> and right. you come from three generations That's right. that have been involved with the Salvation Army. And besides traveling internationally, you said that the directors really stay in one area for three to five years. Yeah, we try to increase that uh, incrementally. There was a day when Salvation Army officers were transportable even with in months. Uh, my own wife had an appointment for like one month. Um, but we've tried to increase that because we, we recognize, administration, let's say, recognizes that uh, the, longer, uh, the longevity of an officer really builds the community of the Salvation Army around a, a person. So I think we're probably up between three and five years for stays on an average at this point. Uh, but we like to be mobile, and uh, we, we don't own our own homes. We live in, because it's a Salvation Army, we use this this vernacular of, of the military, so I live in a quarters. Okay. And it's furnished. So, and the automobile is furnished by the Salvation Army, so that when I transfer, I simply pack up my personal belongings and I go to the next assignment, and everything that I need, the support I need, is there. Already there. It's very interesting. I had no idea the Salvation Army was set up this way. And you're the interim director, so thank you for being in our community. It's, it's wonderful to have you here, and there'll be a new director, you think, in June. Oh, yeah. I'm, in fact, I'm learning. I, I wish I'd have known about Stuart before I bought my house up in Spring Hill, Florida. <laughs> now, nothing wrong with Spring Hill, Florida on the nature coast, but this is a well-kept secret here. And it's beautiful, and I'm falling in love with the Stewart area. But I am here only a short time. I met with a state leader last week, and he asked the question, well, are you settling in? And I said, no, I don't want to settle <laughs> in, because it hurts when you have right. to pick up and say goodbye. Right. So, yes, I'm here for just a short time. Uh, a new officer will be announced, and they will probably arrive at the end of June. Now, I don't know if this is a, a question for Kim or yourself, Colonel Stressel, but with the pandemic, what needs are you seeing uh, that have really come to the forefront? Well, we are seeing about a 40% increase in requests for food, um, both in Martin County and St. Lucie County, a little higher in St. Lucie County. Um, and then, of course, when the pandemic hit and we had all those people um, falling behind on their rent and mortgages, uh, we were fortunate here in Martin County to be one of two agencies um, appointed to um, distribute the CARES Act money. Okay. And so during that period of time, we served 155 families, and it came out to just under a half a million dollars wow. that we served. Um, so we help, and we do that on a regular basis. We help with past due rent, past due mortgages, past due utilities, if they need help with their prescriptions. If they need clothing or furnishings, we'll give them a voucher to go shop for what they need from our thrift stores. Um, and then the food is probably the number one thing that we're seeing, particularly with this pandemic. Well, and right now, food prices are increasing exponentially. Every time you go to the store, I, I was shocked. I, I bought 18 eggs the other day. It was $4.59. I thought, holy cow. And it, it, was, it raised so much since the last time I was in there. And it, it, just all the food. And then there's some bare shelves that are a little frightening to see from time to time. And it impacts uh, all not-for-profits as well. I've been looking at our budgets and our, our uh, financials, and of course they're increasing incrementally as well. 
For example, it costs, it did cost about $30,000 a month just to keep our Compassion House open. Uh, it's around 37000 now wow. a month just, wow. just to maintain that program. That's incredible. It's an yeah. incredible increase there. It's yeah. over 20%. So. Yeah. Um, if, if you have a question or comment for Colonel Stressel or Kim, uh, I'm watching the Facebook live feed. And, of course, you can call into the studio at 772-220-9788. That's 220-WSTU. Um, they are here representing the Salvation Army, which is doing so many good things here in our community on the Treasure Coast. And you talked about the Compassion House. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, it's been open since 2012. And uh, we've uh, roughly helped around 500 uh, people through that program and uh, it, it's a small group and, and the way you get in there is actually by interview and it's mostly for mothers with children and we have a number of rooms I believe it's eight rooms That's that we great. have uh, for them so that they can stay as a family unit we think that's incredibly important yes and we try to make it as much like home as possible. We don't charge them anything. In fact, our case managers uh, uh, really try to help them with good case management, and that means finding jobs or getting education. We have partners that help us with that. And we ask them to sort of try to save enough money so that they can find a place of their own. I think our average uh, stay is between three and four months. But the, the most difficult thing we're having to, tr to find right now, and other not-for-profits have confirmed this with them, is affordable housing. Right. Uh, the market has just gone crazy. Indeed. And, and so some of them that who did have, an, uh, did get an apartment, they, the uh, rents have been raised so high that they're actually inquiring if they can come back because they, wow. they can't afford uh, those places. I've heard some rents. I mean, they've they've almost doubled. And you know, when you you have a budget to live on, and That's all of right. a sudden you, your lease comes up and your rent goes up, yeah. you know, fifty, sixty percent. It's it's trying times. But what's the availability? You said there's eight rooms. Is there generally a room available? Or we just um, got right the now? report this morning, an updated report. That there's a wait list constantly, and right now there's 24 families on our wait list to get into Compassion House um, because it's a transitional shelter. We don't. Um, we don't force people out until they're ready to move into a, their own apartment. Right. And so it's, it's, it's agonizing because we can only serve so many at a time. Um, we typically serve about 80 women and children a year. Um, wow. But there's always a wait list. It's, it has been since we opened. It's, a, it's amazing to hear that there are all these fam A lot of them living in their cars or, you know, staying on someone's couch. Um, Especially with the children, it's super tough that, you know, I, I, I always hear about those stories and you just – it's, it's hard to bear the thought that children are homeless out there and, you know, trying to find their way to still go to school and still have a normal life. So it's it's wonderful that you're out there. I'm sure you wish you could have a couple of compassion houses. Yeah. And, you know, fundraising right now is tough because there, there are a lot of nonprofits out there. So everybody is hoping for that donation. But Right. It's, it's, it's very competitive out there. And, um, and, and the nice thing is that the not-for-profits that I've met, they've found their own niche and they're working in their lane and and we're cooperating a great deal we have a lot of meetings that we work together with so i like that yeah. it is it's and, and i'm sure you've noticed in this community this treasure coast the folks here really come out and they help their the organizations very we, generous yes yeah. it's it's uh, i love this county for this reason yeah. as well uh, i've been here a little over a, a decade and uh, the people here are absolutely amazing and they mm -hmm. come together for causes and pull our bootstraps up and you know work so moving forward we just got a couple minutes here this half hour went very quickly but what are your strongest needs right now besides the food drive of course that's always there well we're looking for affordable housing for our um, compassion house clients to move into so if there are any landlords out there that have a space available and they just have the heart for you know compassionate giving consider giving one of our compassion house clients um, a chance and, and rent a space to them um, we are also in the process of developing some transitional housing on our property. We actually own the property all around our building. Oh. And so we have plans in the works 
um, to develop a couple of duplexes back there into which the, these ladies can move and gain a little bit of rental experience. So those, those are plans far in the distance yet, but um, you know, we always would appreciate some support along those lines too. Affordable housing is a really tough one, especially here in Martin County. I, I don't know if you've been able to find a little more availability in, in St. Lucie and Okeechobee or not, but I know it's Right, it's and I issue. think it's, it's that way all over Florida right now. We're a preferred destination right. uh, for, their, sure for the country. And so uh, and that's nice. It helps, the, you know, the, our property rates go up, but, uh, but also it's, it's, it's a detriment to those who can't afford so Colonel Stressel, we got just a couple minutes here, and I want to ask anything coming up here in the next few. Funny months? you should oh, ask. <laughs> <laughs> On we we have uh, a country music artist by the name of Stephen Cade, and uh, he wants to come. He comes around to the various uh, shelters, and he the, his uh, publicist called us. He he's coming Monday. I know it's. President's Day, but he's coming Monday, and we've convinced him to come at 6.30 at the Salvation Army, and he's going to do a little bit of impromptu concert. Awesome. And, and, and it's primarily for our families at the shelter, but we're also, we also feed um, people from the street. We're inviting them to come in. And if anybody from the public wants to come, it, it's going to be at 6.30 at the Salvation Army, and it's really for the Compassion House Shelter. Uh, he is going to give uh, a guitar away or so. I think two. He's going to give two. us two guitars for the shelter. For Wonderful. The shelter. Yeah. But here's his picture, and uh, I don't know if you can put it on screen. Yes, or... I don't know if you can see that or not. Oh, okay. Wrong. There we go. So we're gonna we're gonna show that right now while we're talking. But that, what a wonderful event and a very generous man. And uh, do you sell the guitars through the the shop or is it an auction? You think? Uh, he wants them to stay within the shelter as kind of a, a therapy for oh, wonderful the for the people to use. So right. He's going to show the the kids how to play a guitar so they can just you know play around on them and, and music is so important for kids right. so that's that's awesome but colonel stressall thank you so much for joining us today our pleasure kim what a pleasure to have you please uh contact me ahead of christmas again this okay. year and okay. we'll get you in ahead of the red kettle drive so <laughs> but thank you both so much and folks if you can support the salvation army they always can use assistance in so many so many ways money food all their donations it all helps thanks casey you're welcome casey.